Greetings! Welcome to Electronics 2. This is lecture number 34 and I am Bezad Zavi. Today we will continue to look at feedback and we will focus on four types of feedback topologies that we encounter uh, often in practice. And these are the sort of four canonical topologies that help us understand how we would go about analyzing a given circuit in terms of feedback. So uh, we'll look at these four topologies uh, at a general level and then we will go into one of them, namely voltage-voltage feedback, and try to derive its properties and see uh, what negative feedback provides for us, what benefits we have, um, perhaps what disadvantages we have. Um, uh, so uh, that's the uh, focus of today's discussion. Eventually uh, this is only one of these four topologies. Eventually, we will look at the other three as well. All right. Now, if you recall, last time we talked about finding, uh, looking at sense and uh, we talked about sense and return mechanisms, and uh, we started with the general feedback system shown on over here, and we were curious to see how we would uh, sense a quantity out here. This quantity, how do I measure a voltage or how do I measure a current before I enter the feedback network? And we saw that if we are measuring a voltage, then the measuring device should go in parallel with that port and measure it like a voltmeter, and preferably has a very high input impedance so that it measures the voltage without disturbing it. For a current quantity, on the other hand, we saw that if this amplifier provides a current, we have to cut this wire and insert uh, this device, like a current meter, in this wire to measure the current. So the current measuring circuit or device should go in series with the output port. And preferably, it should have a very small input resistance, zero in, pr in principle, so that this circuit doesn't feel that we broke this wire and try to measure the current. All right, now in terms of returning the feedback signal to the input, uh, performing this sort of subtraction or addition, we again decided that there should be two cases, voltage-voltage or current-current. So if we have uh, a voltage at the input of A1 and voltage produced by K, how do we add two voltages? We have to put them in series. So we add this voltage in series with this voltage and apply it to A1. Uh, so we see that if we write a KVL around this loop, the voltage that arrives at A1 is in fact V in minus this voltage, just the way this is X minus U. Uh, for current quantities, on the other hand, if I have two current sources and I want to add them, I have to put them in parallel. So the current produced by this circuit uh, which is carried between these two wires, should be added to this input before it enters A1, or subtracted, right? So we want to perform this subtraction in the current domain, so we place this in parallel with this and apply the result to A1. All right, so these uh, pictures will help us analyze and recognize various uh, feedback circuit topologies as we go along. All right, let's... Uh, to talk about the four feedback topologies that we encounter. <clears throat> uh, this is nothing uh, surprising because by now we know that uh, the input to a circuit can be a voltage or a current, this quantity, and similarly the output. So we have four possibilities. We saw that there were four types of amplifiers, right? Voltage in, voltage out, current in, voltage out, voltage in, current out, and voltage in, voltage, uh, current in, current out. So we must have also four feedback topologies. For example, this amplifier we bought, it has a voltage at the input, a voltage at the output. So we are measuring the voltage at the output, running through the feedback network, and returning voltage to the input. So we say voltage, voltage, feedback. Or it could be that the input is a current quantity. This is a current quantity, this is a current quantity, this is a current quantity, right? Because uh, <clears throat> we can subtract these two only if they have the same dimension, 
and the result will have the same dimension, right? So this is current, this is current, but let's say this is voltage. So now we have a different topology because we are sensing the voltage at the output, returning a current to the input. So there should be four cases, right? Okay, so we're gonna make a table so that this is very clear and uh, the table will look like this. So <clears throat> let me just add these here. So here's the table. We have X, we have Y, we have U, and then we have the feedback topology. Okay, all right, so X may be a voltage. So here's voltage. Uh, y could be a voltage, so could be that I am interested in voltage input, voltage output. So no problem there. Then how about U? Well, U is subtracted from X, so U and X have to have the same dimension. So this should be vo voltage. And the feedback topology is called the following. So be careful here. We call it voltage, voltage, feedback. The first term refers to what we are sensing at the output. We are sensing a voltage here, right? Because Y is a voltage quantity. So this refers to the output, what we are sensing at the output. And then this refers to what we are returning to the input. So that is also a voltage quantity. Okay? All right. Now, there is another name for this topology. Uh, and it comes from the following observation. To measure the voltage at the output of a circuit, we have to place our voltmeter in parallel with the output, right? Like this. So we are measuring the output in a shunt form. Shunt means parallel. So sometimes we say shunt because the uh, feedback network is in shunt, is in parallel with the output. And then at the input, what are we doing? At the input, we are adding two voltages like so. So these are in series, right? These three are in series. So we say series, shunt, series, feedback. So both of these expressions are used to refer to this type of topology. You can say shunt series or you can say voltage voltage. And you always remember that this refers to the output that we are measuring or sensing or producing, and this refers to the input, okay? We are measuring the output in parallel, so that's what we call shunt. We are bringing the voltage back in series, so that's what we call series, shunt series feedback. All right, some books prefer to use this terminology. Okay, all right, that's one case. There's another case, maybe X should be a current, and Y is still a voltage, right? So I buy an amplifier, and it prefers to have an input current and generates an output voltage. If you remember, that's what we call a trans-impedance amplifier, right? Okay, then how about U? Well, U is coming back here, and it's subtracted from X. Because X is a current quantity, U has to be a current quantity. So that's a current quantity. So let me draw a line here. And what shall we call this? We are sensing a current, we are sensing a voltage at the output, returning a current. So we're going to call this voltage current feedback. Okay? Because we are sensing a voltage at the output, the output is a voltage quantity, and we are returning a current. So voltage current feedback. The alternative name would be we are measuring the voltage, so that's still shunt. We are measuring the voltage in parallel. Uh, how about the uh, return path? We are returning a current in parallel also, right? To add two currents, we have to add, put place them in parallel. So that would be shunt, shunt feedback. Okay, so that's the second feedback topology that we can identify. So now you can see what happens for the third and the fourth, right? 
So the third would be, for example, voltage in, current out. So this takes voltage and generates current. So that's what you would call what you would call a transconductance amplifier, as we saw before. And then U has to have the same dimension as X. So U is a voltage. And the result is, because I'm measuring a current at the output and returning a voltage, I will call that current voltage feedback. Okay, you can also name it like this. Current is measured in series, uh, is measured in parallel, so that would be, uh, uh, sorry, current is measured in series, so that would be series, uh, then the voltage is measured in series, so that would be series, series feedback, right? So you can play with these names if you want. And the last uh, would be current in, current out, current feedback. So this would be, we are uh, measuring current and returning a current, so we say current, current feedback. Okay, so these are the four possibilities that we can identify for the uh, for a feedback circuit, right? Now, why do we do this anyway? Why do we look at? Uh, why do we try to categorize? Well. Because as we will see, as we analyze circuits in the context of these four topologies, we will see that feedback gives us interesting but different features for these different topologies. Meaning that, uh, for example, the output impedance of this feedback topology will be some amount as a result of feedback. The output impedance of this feedback topology will be some other amount. So that's why it's good to be able to recognize which one of these topologies we have in a given circuit and then try to predict uh, what happens to the gain and the input impedance and the output impedance and so forth, right? Remember, one property of feedback was uh, modification of input and output impedances. Well, that modification depends on the type that we have. In these four types, we have different types of modification so that's why it's good to know which uh, version, which topology we have, uh, we are looking at. Okay, all right, so these are the four feedback topologies. Our objective in analyzing any of these, so our objectives, uh, objective is to find the closed loop gain and the closed loop input and output impedances. That makes sense, right? Uh, we need these things. If I want to take this amplifier and use it somewhere, I need to know how much gain it has. I also need to know its input impedance and output impedance. We saw the significance of input and output impedances in electronics one. We saw that when we want to interface this circuit with another circuit before it, the input impedance plays a role. And we want to interface this circuit with a circuit after it, the output impedance plays a role. So we do need to know these values before we hook this up to something here and something here. Okay, so that's our objective. For each of these cases, we need to perform this analysis. So we're gonna draw a circuit that uh, has uh, voltage at the input, voltage at the output. Uh, it's trying to measure sensitive voltage at the output and return a voltage to the input. So that means that uh, we are measuring a voltage here. That's how we do it. We are returning a voltage here. That's how we do it. Right, so these two will form a negative feedback system for us. And then we can find the gain, we can find the input impedance, and we can find the output impedance. All right, so that's the general objective that we have here. Okay, uh, so let's uh, move on to uh, the first type topology, which is voltage-voltage. So 
Uh, very simple, right? We have an input voltage here, feedback voltage here, input voltage here, output voltage here. Everything is voltage. This is the most common and most uh, intuitive circuit topology that we have. So let's start from there and analyze it. So analysis of voltage voltage feedback. Okay? All right, so we want to draw a general representation of a feedback system that has that voltage at the input, voltage at the output, and the feedback network is returning a voltage and all that, and then try to analyze, quantify its performance. All right, so how do we draw a general representation of this type of feedback topology? Well, we have to examine these very carefully. This is very general, but I want to make it a little less general so that I can see voltages here and voltages here, right? Okay, so we have an input, we'll call it V in. That's a voltage quantity. This voltage wants to go, and then we need to subtract the feedback voltage from it. Well, we know that to, to add or subtract two voltages, they have to go in series. So the feedback voltage is coming uh, like this, right? The feedback voltage is coming like this and getting subtracted from the input. So my uh, feed forward amplifier, the main amplifier is like this. The feedback network is like this. And these are placed in series. This and this and this are in series, as we discussed before, right? Okay. And then this uh, A1 generates a voltage. We call this V out. And we would like to take that and give it to the feedback network. So we will sense it in parallel because we're trying to sense a voltage, like a voltmeter. And this is the topology that we have for voltage voltage feedback right this port is in parallel this port these ports are in series and again that takes us back to the name of shunt series feedback right shunt at the output series at the input okay all right so now i should be able to find v out over v in this v out over this v in is the closed loop gain right the open loop gain is a1 I bought this amplifier, it has a voltage gain, voltage gain of 50. And now I place it in this negative feedback loop, so the overall gain, voltage gain, will be smaller, as we saw before, so V out over V in will be smaller. So let's try to find that. Of course, we already know how, what that should be, right? Because from here, if you remember, we had the Y over X equals A1 over 1 plus K A1, so obviously, I should see the same thing here, right? It's no different. But let's just do it to make sure. Okay. All right. So how do I analyze this? Well, this feedback network measures V out here, right? And it generates a feedback signal. And we saw that K means we take this voltage, multiply it by K, and reproduce it here. So this voltage is given by K times V out, right? This is what you call U. So U is equal to K times Y, right? Okay, so that part is easy. Uh, now, how much voltage is going into A1? This voltage. Well, I have a KVL here, right? So V in and this and this. So this plus this should be equal to V in. So this error voltage should be equal to V in minus KV out, right? So this error voltage is equal to V in minus K V out. Just the way we discovered that this voltage was equal to X minus U, right? And it was equal to X minus K Y. Same thing, right? It's the, it's the error signal. All right, and now A1 says, I have an input voltage equal to this. I'm going to multiply it by A1 and produce it here. So V out comes out to be equal to A1 times this. So V in 
minus k times v out. Okay, so now we need to find v out over v in, and obviously this will give us v out over v in is equal to a1 over 1 plus k, a1. Okay, so this is the closed loop gain. So closed loop gain. All right, so that was easy, right? Okay, so in the next step, uh, we need to find the input and output impedances. Uh, let's see uh, if I have uh, another one. Okay, so I just wanted to emphasize that in this topology, what we expect in the ideal case are the following. This is a voltage amplifier. So what is this input impedance? So this input impedance should be infinity, right? A voltage amplifier wants to sense a voltage, just like a voltmeter. It must not disturb that voltage, so its impedance must be infinity, so it doesn't uh, change the voltage, doesn't dry current. Okay, how about the output impedance of this amplifier? When you buy it, A1, ideally it should be zero, because it wants to produce a voltage, it wants to act as a voltage source, so ideally it has a zero output impedance. So that's zero. How about this guy? This feedback network wants to measure a voltage. So the best we can do is make this input impedance infinity, right? Then we can measure a voltage like a good voltmeter. And then this feedback network wants to produce a voltage here, so it must be a good voltage source, so its output impedance should be zero. So this should be zero. All right, so this is a, the idealized situation. In practice, of course, it will never be like that. But uh, these are good numbers to keep in mind. Okay, in the next step, we want to calculate uh, the input impedance of the closed loop circuit. And what this means is this. I bought this amplifier and has some input impedance, right? It's not infinity. Maybe it's 10 kilo ohms or maybe it's 1 kilo ohm. And now I place it in this feedback loop, like this, right? I place it in a feedback loop. I have a new amplifier. This new amplifier starts from these two wires and ends with these two wires, right? So the input of this new amplifier is not here. It's between these two. So the input impedance is not the same as that of A1 anymore, right? It's something different. So we would like to see what that input impedance is. Okay, so we say input, uh, maybe I should be careful here. So we'll say closed loop, closed, closed loop input impedance. All right, so again, we're trying to keep it relatively general. And we want to know, in the general case, what happens to the input impedance when we take this guy and place it in a feedback loop. All right, so here's how it goes. Uh, we have to use this device, but we have to assume that this input impedance is not infinity, right? Because if it is infinity, this new one, the closed loop impedance, is also infinity, right? Not, not much point in doing that. So let's assume that this amplifier, when you buy it, has a finite input impedance, not infinity. Okay, so 5 kilo ohms, 10 kilo ohms. We're going to call that R in. Okay, so uh, we will model it like this. Here's A1. I just bought this, and it has an input resistance, which I call R in. Do you remember the models that we developed for amplifiers? Voltage, voltage, voltage current, and all that. If you go back to those models that we saw, and looked at the actual model of a voltage amplifier, we saw that we had a resistance between the two inputs to model the finite input resistance, right? Because this, is, this may not be infinity, right? So we need the resistance. Okay, so that is the input resistance of A1 connected between these two terminals from the models that we developed some lectures ago. All right, the rest 
are the same. So we will connect everything like that, okay. And we are bringing a voltage back. So these things go in series, V in. And we are measuring a voltage here. So that goes like this. And uh, what we are interested in is the input resistance, input impedance between these two wires, right? This, is, this whole thing is now a new amplifier. So if I find V in over I in, that is the closed loop impedance, right? Closed loop impedance because I am finding the voltage and the current uh, related to this big feedback circuit. Okay, so that's our ob objective. All right, that shouldn't be that hard, right? Okay, well, um, well, let's see. I in flows through R in and generates a voltage. How much is this voltage? This voltage is Ohm's law, so that voltage would be I in times R in. So that's great, right? Okay. And uh, what I would like to do is just uh, figure out what should go here. Um, if this is I in R in, the voltage difference between these two, how much is this voltage here? Well, we bought this amplifier and this amplifier is set. I will take my input voltage and multiply by A1 to produce the output voltage. So if this voltage is called I in R in, this voltage will have to be A1 times I in R in. So this voltage is equal to A1 I in R in. Right? This is the same voltage that we had here, except that now we have a new parameter called I in. All right, if this voltage is A1 I in R in, how much is this voltage? The feedback network says, I will take this voltage and multiply it by K and generate a new voltage here. So this voltage is given by K times that. So it's K A1 I in times R in. Okay, so that's easy. All right, so now you can see that we have a loop around which we can write a KBL. And everything is known. We have V in, I in R in, K A1 I in R in. We are interested in V in over I in. So let's, let's write a KBL. The KVL says this plus this is equal to this, right? So V in is equal to I in R in, I in R in, plus this voltage, which is K A1 I in R in. K A1 R in I in. So that gives us the closed loop input impedance of this big circuit. So V in over I in is equal to, you can see that we have R in times one plus K times A1. This is a beautiful result. This is a critical advantage of negative feedback. So I am going to put a box around this so that you remember this. What is this saying? This is saying that the input impedance of the closed loop circuit, right, this circuit, this whole circuit, is equal to the input impedance of the open loop circuit, this guy. When you bought the circuit, before we closed the loop, we had this much input impedance, R in, right, this amplifier, is equal to that times 1 plus Ka1, times 1 plus the loop gain, right? So you can see this factor of 1 plus the loop gain appearing everywhere, right? Here, we saw that the closed loop gain was the open loop gain divided by one plus the loop gain. Here, we see that the input resistance is now multiplied by one plus the loop gain when we close the loop, close the feedback loop around the amplifier. So is this a good thing or a bad thing? The input resistance has gone up as a result of negative feedback. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, what are we trying to build? We're trying to build a voltage-voltage amplifier, right? 
So ultimately, you want to sense a voltage here because the input is a voltage quantity. So if you're trying to build a voltage, voltage amplifier, do you want this input impedance to be high or low? You want it to be high because we're trying to sense, we're trying to measure a voltage. So the input impedance should be infinity, right? We're trying to measure something without disturbing it. So it's a good thing because now the amplifier is a better voltage sensor, is a better voltage amplifier because it can sense something, it can hook up something to this without loading the preceding stage. All right, so negative feedback has helped us build a better voltage amplifier in the sense that the input impedance has gone up. Okay, so that's a critical property that comes out of the uh, negative feedback circuit, right? So these are things that we have to remember. Now, I should caution you that this expression holds only when we have voltage feedback, when we are, we are returning a voltage, right? When we are returning a current, it's a different story. So remember we had four topologies, and we always said that Negative feedback modifies the input and output impedances. Sure, it has modified the input impedance, right? That's gone up by a factor of 1 plus Ka1 when we are in this topology, okay? So that's why it's good to uh, differentiate among these topologies because each of them has different properties. Okay, so that's the closed loop input impedance. We are also interested in the closed loop output impedance. So we should go and build another model. Assume that we bought an amplifier. The amplifier does not have a zero output impedance. Ideally, it should be zero, right? But it's some amount, 100 ohms, 500 ohms, something. And now we apply negative feedback. And we would like to see what happens to the output impedance. OK, so let's go to the next page and see what we can derive for that. Okay, so here's the output impedance. Or again, I should emphasize that we are interested in the closed loop output impedance. So, closed loop output impedance. All right, we're still in the voltage voltage feedback topology and we're trying to find the output impedance after feedback has been applied okay all right so what do we do well here's our forward amplifier feed forward amplifier a1 and when i buy this amplifier the standalone amplifier it doesn't have a zero output resistance so i have to model that how do i model that if you go back to models that we developed several lectures ago, it looked like this. We said, okay, here's a voltage source, which we call A1 times V1, if you want to call it. So this is V1, right? This is the ideal voltage amplifier model. But now we have an output resistance. So I have to put a resistance here. I'm going to call this R out. Okay, so when you bought the amplifier and you measure this output resistance, it's some amount. So that is modeled by this R out. Now we go ahead and apply our feedback. Okay, so we have our K here. K measures this voltage, so measures this voltage in parallel, right? And uh, then we return this in series. And then we have a voltage source here, which we call V in. And our objective is to find the closed loop output impedance, meaning the impedance seen between these two wires. Right? Obviously, that's not the same as this resistance. Why? Well, because this thing is doing something here, right? This feedback is doing something. So we suspect that what we measure here in terms of output resistance will be different from this R out. Okay, so what's the procedure? It's very easy, right? We just take a voltage source, which we call Vx, and we measure Ix, right? Vx over Ix is the 
output resistance, all small signal, of course. Uh, but then when we do this, what do we do with this guy? To measure the output resistance, to measure the 7-and resistance, all independent sources are set to zero. So this becomes zero, meaning it's a short circuit, right? OK, so let's try to calculate Vx over Ix. It's simple, right? All right, so how do we do that exactly? Well, uh, we say uh, if this current is Ix, uh, this voltage is Vx, right? This voltage is Vx, and it comes to K. What does K do? K says, I will take that voltage, multiply it by K, and generate it here. So this voltage is equal to K times Vx. All right. Uh, this is zero. So how much is this voltage here? This voltage, the error voltage in this case, would be just minus Kvx, because this is zero. You have zero minus this. So that's minus Kvx. This is the voltage that arrives at the input of A1, the feed-forward amplifier. Now A1 says, I need to multiply whatever I have here by A1 to generate this voltage here, right? Okay, so what we can say is that uh, this voltage, let me change the color of my pen. So this voltage here is given by A1 times this voltage. This voltage is this. So that would be minus A1 kvx. That's this voltage here. Okay, that's what, that, the, what A1 wants to do. It has a gain of A1, so it has to multiply its input voltage by A1. Okay, so again, our objective is to find Ix. And what I can say is that Ix is equal to this voltage minus this voltage divided by this resistance, right? You have a resistance between these two voltage sources. So we can say Ix is equal to Vx, this voltage minus this voltage, so plus A1 kVx divided by this resistance, R out. All right, I just uh, wrote a uh, KVL, if you will. This voltage and this voltage and this voltage have to satisfy KVL, right? Okay, so that gives us Vx over Ix. And how much is that? R out goes over here, gets divided by 1 plus Ka1. So R out divided by 1 plus Ka1. So this whole thing is the closed loop output impedance. There's also a beautiful result, right? It says that uh, as a result of feedback, the type of feedback we are studying here, right? We're returning, a, sensing a voltage and returning a voltage, right? As a result of this feedback, the output resistance has gone down by a factor of 1 plus Ka1. When I bought the original open loop uh, feed forward amplifier A1, it had a resistance of R out. That's what we call the open loop output resistance. Then as a result of negative feedback, it went down by a factor of 1 plus Ka1. 1 plus the loop gain. So this is the open loop output resistance, right? Or impedance. Okay, so the open loop output impedance gets divided by 1 plus the loop gain. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I'm trying to produce a voltage here, right, in the, when the circuit is operating properly. Uh, so if I go back to the previous page, it might be easier to see that. So this circuit wants to deliver a voltage out here, right, to some load. So if it wants to produce a voltage, it wants to act as a good voltage source. So its output impedance should be as low as possible. Now, we start out with an output resistance here for A1, an open loop output resistance, which is not zero, some amount, but as a result, as a result of feedback, this resistance has gone down. So it has become a better voltage amplifier because 
its output resistance is lower. And that is the key result that we obtain here. Okay, so what we see here is that as a result of negative feedback, we sacrifice some gain. The open loop gain is A1, the closed loop gain is A1 divided by 1 plus the loop gain. But we gained two important benefits. One, the input impedance went up by 1 plus the loop gain. So that's good. It becomes a better voltage sensor, voltage amplifier. And two, the output impedance also went down by 1 plus the loop gain. So again, it became a better voltage source or voltage amplifier. All right. And of course, the bandwidth is increased and the linearity is improved. All the other stuff that we talked about before. All right. So this is the uh, a summary of the voltage voltage feedback amplifier. All right. It's important to remember how these uh, come out. Uh, you can see that they improve the performance. That's one way of remembering the result, right? That the input impedance has to go up because the voltage amplifier because we're returning a voltage to the input. The output impedance goes down because we are sensing the output voltage. We're trying to make the output voltage more regulated, so we are reducing the output resistance. Okay, we have a few minutes for an example. Let's go over an example and see what we can deduct, uh, deduce from here. Uh, so we studied this before, right? If I take a simple transistor as a voltage subtractor, right? I said it's an amplifier, and I can say that these are two inputs of the amplifier. This is one output. So if I divide the output down, R1 and R2, I am sensing the output voltage, like so. I get a fraction of it. This is what you would call U. And then I return back this to the input, right? So that would be just connected like this. So we decided that this is indeed a voltage, voltage feedback topology. Okay, we saw this example last time in terms of what we are sensing at the output and what we are returning to the input. All right, so this is a voltage voltage feedback topology. In fact, this topology is similar to the more uh, general and abstract topology that we have here, right? So this is what we've seen before. And uh, these are similar, right? Here you have an amplifier with two inputs, one output. Here we have an amplifier with two inputs and one output. The same thing, right? Okay, so we see that we are sensing the output in parallel and we are returning it in series because this voltage and this voltage source and this voltage satisfy KVL, right? So if this is V in and you call this U, you see that U and this and this satisfy KVL, so they are in series. And the same story happens here. If I draw V in to here, so you see that V in is here, U is here, and the error voltage appears between these two inputs, right? So what we have here between these two inputs is V in minus U. Okay, so we can easily map uh, this circuit to the topology that we saw on the previous page, right? So this topology said that uh, we have to have uh, the output in parallel and the input in series with the input voltage source, right? So we have to identify a feedback port, an input port for v, uh, a voltage source, and an input port for A1. All three are in series. And we can see that that's true. So in this circuit, we have that, right? So we have... Uh, a feedback port, U, coming in, we have a voltage source, and then we have this port of the amplifier, and these are all in series, we, they satisfy KVL. Okay, so this amplifier maps to our uh, voltage, voltage feedback topology, and what you would expect is that the input resistance of this amplifier will be higher than the open loop input resistance by a factor of one plus the loop gain. 
and the output resistance will be lower than that of the open loop amplifier by a factor of one plus the loop gain. Right? That, those were our, our conclusions in this lecture. So uh, we have to verify that, right? We can, we can see, uh, we can verify that just by pretending that this is not a feedback circuit. It's a standard circuit that you can build. And now you say, can I find this input impedance? Sure, we apply Vx and measure Ix. Can I find this output impedance? Sure, we apply Vx and measure Ix. We can verify that, right? Uh, but in the next lecture, we'll try to formulate, based on the equations that we have derived, the closed loop input impedance of the circuit and the closed loop output impedance of the circuit, right? And of course, the voltage gain, but we already figured out the closed loop voltage gain of the circuit before in the previous lecture or the lecture before it. All right, so you can see that now we have all these equations under our belt, so it's very easy for us to go and analyze these circuits. I will see you next time.